Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Now, in this video, we are going to be revisiting something we learnt in the previous video, known as, we said, completing the square. Now, in this video, we're going to touch on some really important ideas. And that was that now that we have learnt the method of completing square, completing the square, we were given a whole bunch of new ways to solve quadratic equations. Now, before we could only solve quadratic ex equations, for example, when the numbers were really nice. So, for example, we could use something like PSF and factorize this in a really nice way. We would say, for example, here we want a number to add to give me four and multiply to give me four as well. So those would be two and two, and we used PSF and that was great. In the last few videos, we also saw that, okay, well, when we don't have really nice numbers, so for example, say this was a three, we don't have any clear numbers off the top of our head that allow us to use PSF. No two numbers that multiply to give me four or add to give me three. These factors are not so obvious, but we learned that well, with completing the square, we can approach any question we need because when we have nice values for my A, B and C here, this being the coefficient here being A, this being B, oops, this being B, and this being C, we can either do it by factorization. When we can't do it by really easy PSF factorization, we can complete the square. And what we are doing in this particular video is we're taking everything we know about completing the square and applying this to the general formula of quadratic equations. So we're pretty much going to be showing that for any values of A, B, and C, we can find values of X that satisfy this quadratic equation that make the left-hand side here being equal to zero on the right-hand side. Now, this video, I'll preface by saying it is purely a derivation of what we will later learn to be the quadratic formula. And we're going to be introducing some definitions. In the next video, we are going to be looking at actually using this for questions. So if you're interested in finding out why this works and some key ideas, I would still encourage you to watch this just so you get a good understanding. Please watch this video. If you already have seen the quadratic formula, this thing doesn't interest you. The next video will go through a lot of the different types of questions we're gonna encounter in this topic. Okay, so let's start. Now, we may have noticed that every single time we had a question in the previous topic, something that we needed to use completing the square. What did we notice about this thing here? We had our B here, we had our C, but what was always the value of A? We always had X squared. So the coefficient in front of X squared is going to be one. Or in other words, here, my A is equal to one. So if I have my general quadratic equation, a general formula of a quadratic equation, I want to get this coefficient in front of x to be 1. And I can do that by just dividing everything through by a. Because we can do that, we can change and make equivalent equations by just doing what we do here to every element in my equation. Now, a divided by a 
those cancel out to give me one. So I have an x squared here. Now for my coefficient of x, I have now b over a x, and my constant c becomes c over a. And zero divided by a, dividing zero by any number just gives me zero. Okay, hopefully we're all good with this so far. Now, the next step we did was we wanted to complete the square. So we wanted to take this value here, b over a, and we wanted to divide it by two and then add whatever that was squared in order to complete my square. So next, we want to take the coefficient of x, in this case, b over a, take b over a, and we want to divide it by two. Now, this is a little weird, but when we, whenever we divide by a number, we can say that's the same as multiplying by its, co its um, reciprocal. So two, instead of two over one, we get multiplying by a half. In other words, we're taking half lots of b over a, and then that's gonna give me, when we multiply fractions, the top ones are gonna times together, and the bottom are gonna multiply together as well. So that's gonna give us b over two a. So that is my thing that I want to square and add to this section in order to complete my square. Now remember, all we're doing here is just completing the square, but we're applying it to a general quadratic equation. So what we're essentially doing here is we're finding a formula that's gonna work for any value of A, B, or C. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have our X squared minus B over A X plus now this guy here, all squared, B over two A squared but remember, we can't just add something out of nowhere. We want to subtract that as well in order to not change my previous line of working. We still want something that is the equivalent of x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a, but we're just adding something else. So we have to subtract the same thing to give me zero and then give me essentially the same thing I had before. Okay, now, let's see where we can go from here. Okay, now, noticing we have a perfect square once again, and we have my constants here. Nothing has changed from when we were looking at completing the square. We're essentially doing the same thing. Now, this guy here is going to become, it's gonna factorize to give me x plus b over two a all squared. Remember, we noticed the pattern when we did all of these things with completing the square. We noticed that, first of all, we're always gonna get a perfect square, and the two terms inside my, my bracket when I factorize this are just my x term here, whatever my term is that's being squared, and my term on the at the end here that's being squared. That is just a pattern that we observed from completing the square. If you want, you can go back to the previous videos and see this for yourself. But because we're conscious of time here, I'm going to just assume that we're all good with this particular step. And now here, I'm going to just take this next term here, and I'm gonna do my b over a all squared. So that's gonna give me minus b squared on top of a squared. Oh, sorry, jokes, sorry about that. 
there is meant to be a two down the bottom here. So I have b over 2a all squared, and I'm subtracting from that b over 2a all squared, not b over a squared. My apologies if, ever, if anyone was just confused about that. Now, my two down the bottom is going to get squared as well. So that's going to give me four a squared. And I am adding C over A here. And that gives me the zero. All right. So hopefully you're still with me. Um, what we want to do here is now using one of the methods we learned for completing the square, let's just get all of my constants on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my x plus b over 2a all squared, and I'm going to shift everything else to the other side. So that's going to require me to add b squared over 4a squared and subtract c over a from this left hand side. And that's going to get rid of all of this and leave me with my perfect square on the left hand side. Okay, so we're left with x plus b over 2a all squared equals to b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Okay. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting a lot closer to where we need to go. Now, my right hand side here, I want to tidy up my fractions here. So we want to tidy this up. And we're going to do that by noticing that, okay, there is an algebraic fraction here with a subtraction. So we need the same denominator here. We need to find the lowest common denominator and then make equivalent fractions in order to subtract, do this subtraction with the numerators. This is just a revision of algebraic fractions here. So here we want to consider what is the lowest common denominator? What is the smallest thing that both of these denominators, 4a squared and a, go into? Well, I can pretty easily get a to 4a squared. I just need to multiply it by 4a. So let's do a little aside down here for my algebraic fractions. Okay. I'm going to take b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. And I notice that we can get this to a denominator of 4a squared. I just want to multiply my a on the denominator by 4a. And remember, we're making an equivalent fraction. So what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So I get b squared over 4a squared minus, and we have 4ac over 4a squared. And that's just going to give me, now I can just do this subtraction on the top. So I get b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. So this thing on the right hand side is the same as this thing up the top. The only difference is I've just expressed those first with the same denominator and then done the actual subtraction on the numerators here. So stick with me. We're getting very, very close. Now, I want to, let's just write my next line of working. I'm going to write my equation up here in the same way, but I'm replacing this guy here with this thing highlighted in green down here. So I get 
x plus b on 2a all squared. And that equals to, on the right hand side, b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. And now I just want to get closer and closer to isolating to my x. Now, what do I want to do first? I notice that this whole expression is squared. So I want to undo this by taking the square root of both sides. That's going to give me x plus b over 2a. And that equals to, on my right hand side, I'm taking the square root of the top and bottom. So doing this entire square root here, I'm square rooting the whole fraction. So I can take separate square roots of b squared minus 4ac, and I can square root 4a squared. But I notice here that 4a squared, taking the square root of that, I actually have a perfect square here. Because when I take the square root of 4, so let's just write everything back here. When I take the square root of 4, I get 2. When I take the square root of a squared, I get a. So that's pretty handy here. And now I just need the x on its own. So from both sides of the equation, I want to subtract b over 2a. That's going to leave me with x just by itself. So I'm going to get here x equals to my entire thing here. So square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And I'm going to subtract b over 2a from that. I can also write that as negative b over 2a plus, because this thing is positive, square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And now, sorry, I've made a bit of a boo-boo. When we take the square root of both sides, I can have a positive and a negative solution. It's the same as when we do, for example, x squared equals to 4, my x is going to be plus or minus 2. We have a, a positive or a negative solution I can get when I apply the square root. So, my square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a is going to be either positive or negative because I've applied a square root. And now here, one last step, I notice that just move this down a bit. I have the same denominator here of 2a. So I can just do the upper, whoops, the operation up here on the top and have this all as one fraction with 2a as the denominator. So finally, we end up with x equaling to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over all over 2a. And this thing right here, if you've stuck through all of this, thank you so much. I hope it was a payoff. We get this nice little formula that you will see in your textbook known as the quadratic formula. Now what this does is this allows us to, instead of doing the whole completing the square and figuring out what the two solutions for x are, now we can just take the values of the coefficients. So whatever is in front of x, this b. Because remember, our general formula of a quadratic equation is ax squared, whoops, plus bx plus c equals zero. We can just take my b and pop it into the quadratic formula. We can take my a and pop it into, whoops, pop it into the 
quadratic formula. We can also finally take C and just pop it straight in. Now this saves us the time of completing the square every single time here. We are now can just work through this general formula that's gonna work for every single quadratic equation that we are gonna come across in this course. Now, I will show you how this works over the next couple of videos, but for now, this is how we can go about deriving this quadratic formula. And we're gonna look at plenty of examples in which we know how to use that. We're gonna learn how to use that. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.